<clears throat> In this video, I want to talk to you about one of my least favorite things, studying. Specifically, how I studied in dental school to pass all of my classes. Recently, I was talking to one of the third year dental students on my clinic team about how, for me personally, the spot that they're in was the hardest point in dental school for me. Not because of the material or anything like that, but because I was so close to being done with classes and exams, and yet still having a couple left to take just made it such a grind. And I know it can be hard to imagine a day when you're done with classes and done with exams. For me, that came halfway through my third year of dental school, which was 21st grade. I'd been in school for eight years straight. The longest break I'd had was about six weeks. So, really was a grind. But that also means I've spent a lot of time studying, taking a lot of exams, and hopefully through this video you can find some habits or strategies that will help you to study wherever you're at in your schooling, whether that's undergrad or if you're in dental school, that you can find success using some of these. And if you have some other tips, leave them in the comments below to help your fellow students because we wanna help each other be successful. We don't need to tear each other down to do that. I will add a disclaimer. My dental school has a block curriculum, which means, which means we would typically start a class on a Monday. The exam for that class would typically be the following Thursday, about a week and a half, 10 days, give or take. Some were a little shorter, some were a little longer. But that doesn't mean the strategies and tips can't be used over uh, a normal semester or whatever your school's curriculum is like. While it may not be your favorite thing, and it certainly wasn't mine, attending lecture was critical in me doing well on exams. It allowed me to identify certain topics that the professor emphasized or were repeated throughout lecture, or if they were feeling very generous, maybe they would tell us we needed to know it for the exam. Not everyone learns well in a lecture format. If you're one of those people who learns better through reading, by all means, go and read your textbooks or PowerPoint slides or whatever other materials you have and study that way. Do not feel bad about skipping class if class is not the best use of your time. On top of attending lecture, I also made sure to understand any pre or post quizzes that were associated with lectures so that I could hone in on the important topics of a lecture or a class. During the lecture, I would make notes, star, highlight, those things that were emphasized or most important from a lecture as the professor was going. And these notes would lay the foundation for the next step of how I studied. Some lectures would be straight from the slides and if that was the case, then I would just get started on step two during class. After lecture, I, or me and my study group, would come into a room, much like this one. TV, tables, whiteboards, and we would come and start making cahoots. This process would take anywhere from 45 minutes to maybe up to two hours, depending on how familiar I already was with the material and the length of the PowerPoints that we were making the cahoots from. In total, for the around 30 exams that I took in dental school, there were about 260 cahoots that I made and that ended up being about one for every lecture. If you wanna see a separate video about how to streamline making cahoots, and some tips as to how to make them better, more difficult, etc. Let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to make that video so you can utilize that study tool to the best of your ability. Now there are a lot of great study tools out there, Quizlet, 
Anki, Kahoot. I used Quizlet almost exclusively in undergrad, and I know that there are a lot of people who absolutely swear by Anki. Anki is actually what I use to do most of my studying for boards. You can see that here. But Kahoot is what I settled on for studying during the vast majority of my time in dental school. All of my exams in dental school, other than practical exams, were multiple choice. And Kahoot allows you to make multiple choice or true and false questions. You can add your own pictures without playing, which is why I switched from Quizlet to Kahoot. Kahoots are great because it gamifies learning and studying. You can play them with friends, introduce a little bit of friendly competition, but it also provides a great tool where if somebody misses a question, then the people who understand the material can teach that material to the student that missed the question, and then you are learning from your peers, you're also teaching your peers, so it's a great resource in my opinion. If I was really on top of it, I would have the Kahoot made, and then I would play through it all on the same day. I would do this ideally for each day of class. So what that might look like is if we had class every day that week, make a Kahoot and play the Kahoot. Make the Kahoot, play the Kahoot. And then by the time the weekend rolled around, you'd have five Kahoots made, one for each day of lecture, and then playing through all of those on that weekend to review all of the material from the week. It took a little bit of time, but it was so worth it to review like this and to review that frequently. I would try and get to the point where I would be able to answer the question before the answer choices would pop up to kind of introduce active recall while using Kahoot. But if I couldn't remember it, then I would have the answer choices just like I would on my exam. And as I was playing through the Kahoots, I would make sure to have the lecture PowerPoints up so that if I missed a question, I could go back and review it, or if I realized there was an error in the question or the answers, I could go ahead and fix that as well. During the week of the exam, I would typically try and start playing through each of the cahoots every single day. Now that did get a little bit tricky because a lot of the time we're having lecture and learning new material, and so I'm making cahoots for that material as well as trying to play through that new Kahoot in addition to each of the previous Kahoots. But if you're on top of it and you are reviewing that regularly, the old material is pretty well learned and so it doesn't take too long to play through them depending on the class and the lecture. By the time the exam actually rolled around, I will have been through all of the Kahoots three to maybe five times depending on how long the class was, how nervous I was, etc. I'd also keep track of the scores that I was getting on each of these cahoots so that I could see how my understanding of the material was coming together and that way I could focus more on the material that I didn't have as good of an understanding of versus just spreading all of my time equally playing each of the cahoots. So there were definitely classes and specific cahoots that I played over and over and over again versus other cahoots that I had a good understanding of the material. There were a few classes where for whatever reason, either time or just kind of the nature of the material, it didn't lend itself well into being made into a cahoot. I could probably count on one hand the classes that I didn't make cahoots for and for those classes, what I would do is I would look at the learning objectives at the beginning of each of the PowerPoints, and I would make a study guide using all of those learning objectives and just type out the answers or explanations of those topics that were included in the faculty's learning objectives. And then I would either review that by myself or with a study partner and we would just quiz each other. But like I said, I could probably count on one hand if I actually thought about it, the classes that I made study guides for instead of using cahoots. For me, there was very little consistency 
the day before an exam. There were some classes that I felt great, that I had the material down, and so I would be able to be relaxed, go to bed early. Then there were other classes that I would be absolutely freaking out, worried that I'm going to forget everything that I've studied, and I would be up all night studying and reviewing that material. If a class was super list heavy, so something like pharmacology, where there are different groups or categories of drugs, I would spend a good amount of time the night before the exam writing out those different groups or different lists so that I could keep it straight and not mix things up come the exam day. And then on the day of the exam, I would take my scratch paper and I would just brain dump all of those things out on my scratch paper. That way I could have a physical reference rather than just hoping I memorized it correctly and kept things straight. A lot of the times I wouldn't even reference my scratch paper or the lists that I wrote down because I spent so much time learning that list that I got it down straight. It was very handy to have something that I could reference that I had confidence in that would help me figure out and not mix up these lists or groupings of information. While there were some very close calls me not passing exams, I did end up passing all of my exams for my classes in dental school. Maybe things are going well for you in dental school right now or in school in general, or maybe you're trying to figure out different ways to study and learn the material because things aren't going so well. Wherever you are, I hope that you've found this useful and that if you implement any of these things, let me know in the comments what has worked for you and what you found helpful. 